Facts. You're not gonna like this. Episode 55. Um, this is season four, as you guys know. Um, it's good to be back. It took a bit of a hiatus. A lot of things happened for me life-wise. So now we're in the fifth episode in season four. And today we have, I would say, our first producer. We've never interviewed a producer before. So congratulations. You are the first one with us today. None yeah. other than Prod by Only Singer. That is his production name. And that is who we have with us today. Um, I don't know if you want me to say your actual name. To- yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead. You can give right. me my, my first and last name. What we'll go by? This is this is AJ. Everybody, crowd by only singer as he goes by. And AJ, go ahead and introduce yourself to the crowd, man. Um, what's good, guys? I am AJ Watkins. I'm from the very very small town of Farville, Virginia. Um, I'm a producer. My stage name go is Only Singer. I produce for Credit Karma, Love and Hip Hop, Coco Vango, Light Skin Keisha. Just recently, Gloss Up, Skill a Baby. Um, I have a super long list of everybody that I've produced for. Man, Credit Karma, that's tough, man. He's on the, on the commercials. Yep. They're on the commercials. I might have to I might have to look for one of them next time. I don't know which one it would be because they all, you know, have commercials. Yeah, I can, bro, I, can, I, can, I can send them straight to you. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. You got credit. That's tough. How does that one even come about? Like, artistry is one thing, but, like, the, the commercial, like that. Um, honestly, my, my biggest... I would say, like, my superpower within this is networking. Like, yes, me talking to people, being being very cool with them. Like, building a personal relationship first and just building upon that, opportunities just tend to open up. I know the Credit Karma one came about through Hard Drive, which is, like, a indie, an independent subscription-based label. Um, it's owned by Mickey Shiloh. Um and I was pretty, I'm pretty cool with her. So like, it was like, hey, we got this opportunity for Credit Karma. They're looking for like some up tempo, trappish type beat that has like money sounds in it. So I did that. A couple of days later, they were like, hey, your beat got picked, and they had like one of my friends write to it. So that's, tough. that's how that one came about. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Well. Like always, as, as most of you guys know, these this is just basically an interview. This is a chance for AJ to talk about his brand, everything he's done, how has he gotten to this point, and henceforth. So with that being said, let's dive into our first question we got today. First question we got for you is, first off, explain your love for music, and why did you end up settling on production? Um, So music been in my life like ever since I could remember. Um, been on choirs when I was young. I sat there and listened to whole entire albums with my dad in the car. Like it's just music's just been a part of me. Like if most people like remember me from high school, I used to dance all the time. So like I was it, one with music per se. Um, I wanted to play football. Like like football was like my main thing. And then once. I started production. Like my cousin put FL Studio on my laptop, and he was like, "Yo, make a beat for me for the next time I come back." Like as I was crafting a beat or like attempting to make something, I just fell in love with the process of creation. Like the fact that I start with a blank canvas. It's like art. I start with a blank canvas, and then I put something there, and it's something that someone can use. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. I, I've dabbled in it for a little bit, and yeah, I gotta do my studying because learning the sounds of the different drums and piano keys it, it changes the difference and everything. Cause I, I sit there, yep. I sit there for a minute. I'll be like, no, nope, that's not the right key. Um, mm-hmm. it'll take, it'll take, it'll take, it'll take a minute. But then, why production though? Like, why was why was production the big one that you settled in on? Cause you said it was everything, mm-hmm. dance, singing, all of it. Why production though? Well. I had my hands in dancing and singing. I've done both of them. Uh, but like the production aspect, I had more con- like I had more control with it per se. Like it's more hands on, you know, like I don't have to really rely on uh, learning how to do this, that, and that third from another source, if that makes sense. Like cool. I can just sit there in my room, click click buttons hours on end and not really have to worry about what other people like until it's time to ship it out. 
Like when it came to dancing, it's like, all right, I can put on this performance, but most people aren't going to like it. I could sing, but, you know, wow. to me, that, that's boring to me. Like, I understand it invokes emotion in other people, but like, what really resonated with me was production, like, putting the whole thing together. So like, I might even trans translate into putting together shows for people. Who knows? I don't know how this journey is going to go. That's tough. That's tough. Yeah, it's, it's 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 good when you you know when it comes to creation, you you have everything is hands on. You know, just like doing the podcast and things like that. It's you know it's good to have that creative control because mm-hmm. like you just be able to do whatever you want and just see how things come together. And I forgot to mention at the top of the episode for those that don't know, this this brother here is responsible for our season three intro about a year and a half ago. So he had sent me that a little while back, and we used that for the season three intro and outro so now you know a face to now you know a face of the beat but um yeah it's real nice to have that that creative control even things like in terms of work i know at work now i have to use canva i have to use canva for all these flyers mm-hmm. and marketing stuff and i've i've actually like kind of developed a passion for it where i hate using templates templates like you say the same thing for you like singing it's so boring this is like Okay, throw some words here. Images are already there. I didn't really do anything. It's like, all right, it's that. So I always mm-hmm. like getting on the canvas and I take that that white piece of flyer and I just I add all the colors, I add the imagery, I add the words and different fonts, and I'll play around with it for like an hour or two mm-hmm. just to get the right marketing flyer. And like most of my my, my supervisors, they 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 just be like, oh right, wow, you do a really good job with these, and it's like. Yeah, because, like, you know, we have a lot of downtime at work. Like, besides training clients, I'm just sitting on the clock doing mostly nothing most of the time. Mm-hmm. So to take the time to try to do something like that, it's fun. And it helps me out in, like, other works of life, mainly the podcast, hopefully, because now I can create these nice episode covers and, you know, release these nice videos and take my time with things like that. So, you know, mm-hmm. I understand your, your reasoning for wanting to have that control. But, you know... Just like everything when we all start out, we got to have an influence. So, like, who were your influences yep. when you started to when you were coming up and into now? Because I know that those can change over time. Um, I would say, like, the very, very beginning, my influences were uh, Metro Boomin, Southside, Hayway Mafia, because, you know, that was what I was consuming at the time. Um, that, and then also, like... Um, Producers like Skrillex and Dead Mouse, because during that time I was dancing, so I was listening to a lot of EDM and dubstep as well. Um, I would I would say like as I've grown, um, it's been it's starting to be it's became more of my peers. So like um, producers like um, Denuso, who's done stuff for Young Blue and Chris Brown, um, Mob Glizzy, who is right here in Barbara, Virginia, who's done stuff for Amy Luciani, uh, Gloss Up and Skilla Baby. Um, my my homie Dynasty um yeah Dynasty Dynasty Digital uh bro is Glorilla's DJ like that's one of my one of my uh, role models as well like, stuff so um as as I grew it just became more and more of my peers so the people that I've been hanging around with kicking it with um uh, sending beats back and forth with collabing on stuff with like it's like iron sharpens iron there and that's why you know it's been it became my peers. That's the best. That's 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 the best. That that's the best thing. I feel like you know it, it's relatable. I feel like I've heard a lot of professional athletes say the same things. Like they'll they'll play their peers all the time, or they'll watch their peers mm-hmm. play, and they'll take they'll take a certain move, or a certain shot, or certain concept, certain things that they do. It's like, huh? I like the way he does. Let me add this to my game and see how I can make it even better. But that mm-hmm. leads to the question. Like, so in terms of like getting notoriety in the production, how does that go? Like, you know. How does it go from like you know you just starting out to where you just doing stuff locally to where it just slowly becomes a nationally recognized private process? Um, honestly, it's everyone's journey is completely different. So like my journey might not be the roadmap for someone else's journey, but for me it was just talking and working with people. To be honest, like not being afraid to be like, hey, um, this is what I do. If you need help with it? Let me know. Or when I was in college, I would. Put together i had like a group called the valley boys um i was working with them producing for them and like it turned into me almost like molding their sound and 
you know, having them do shows and hosting parties and this, that, and the third. And then as I was doing that, I was also just like, hey, this is what I've been doing so far and showing like a little portfolio portfolio of what I've done. So like I would say to the greatest path for this is just to continue to you work on your craft to the point where you quote unquote master it, get your 10,000 hours in. Um, you can do one or two things. You can find a local artist and you build their sound and then you take it to, you know, the next step, which is could be to a label or could to be like this management company or this, that, and the third. Or you could um, just go on Instagram since everybody's so accessible. You just be like, hey, um, I'm a producer. This is what I got. Um, I like your sound. Let me work with you. You know, offer value because value value exchange is the best part of the networking game. As you exchange value, you can get into rooms. You can um, basically just, you know, be that be that piece of the puzzle that someone might need. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that that makes that that makes perfect. That makes perfect. Um, and you 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 speak you speak on that. So then, like, I just got a quick question for that. Is like, so in turn, you said one of your friends go over this DJ. Is that mm-hmm. any different from you know just basic production like a Metro Boom would do? Is there differences? Or are they one of the same? Um, rephrase your question. I, I wanna I wanna dig in your mind a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm trying to ask is like, so you say your friend is a Colorist DJ, and yeah. like, what does that entail? Like, is it similar? Is it similar work to what you do in terms of production? Like, when you just produce beats and just send those off, or is it like, is it is it a different? Is it a different realm of like creation? Yeah. No, um, like when it when it comes to just producing, it it kind of varies because sometimes I'll just send beats off. Sometimes we'll get their vocals and we'll put an arrangement around it. Sometimes we'll sometimes we'll just even restructure things and make it sound better. Like, um, but like being friends with Glorilla's DJ, sometimes we're we'll get like the actual song that's out and then we'll just do like maybe like a Jersey remix or maybe like an EDM remix to the song. And then mm-hmm. that becomes like that that remix that official remix and that's more notoriety for us. Well, the way Gorilla is attacking the music scene right now, I feel like you got a couple beats in your future, maybe. Um, got a couple honestly, uh, who knows? Because we we sent a lot. When I say a lot, we've probably shot like a hundred shots so far already. But you know, telling how many how many went in, how many how many missed, how many's been rebounded and put back in. Who knows? So then that leads me to that leads me that leads me to ask like so in terms of building your database like how much how much how much time do you take to build like one beat and how does that huh? end up being like do you take the one beat and you'll make one and then you'll take from that one and make like two three others and then all right okay fresh can let's start fresh again and then um, keep going it, right it just depends to be honest um I can range maybe five minutes to about three days on a beat like it just really depends on how I'm feeling and what it, what what I'm trying to accomplish because I know um, where people have been sending me like loops and stuff it makes it easier for me to just all right I like this melody uh, I like this but maybe I don't like this this sound so I'll take that sound out or put it in my own sound and not do the drums arrange the whole thing then maybe put it in my stash and save it later and start on a whole another one like it just it just really depends okay okay that makes sense that makes sense so like you said, like you said previously, you said like you know when you work with local artists, you try to build that portfolio, you try to constantly build them up. And like I have here is, you know, it's a common saying that uh, artist that artists should stay with their producer that they started out with because it increased the chance of success. How true is that? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a I'm a man of if it if it's one of those things that's what you guys are. Or wanting to do, go for it. If that's something that you don't want to do, okay. To be honest, like, uh, I don't think it's like, hey, that's a necessity thing, something that's necess- um, a necessity. It's just, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, cool. Like, everybody has their own part to play within within their role. So just play your part and do what you got to do. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Well, uh, Biggest thing is, you know, what's next for yourself personally and professionally? 
Um, personally, uh, we just trying to we just trying to make this only a singer brand a uh, a business business and just live off of that. Like no other no other uh, outside income. Like, that's just the main thing that keeps everything rolling. Um, professionally, I, I want a, I want a couple more pla I want a couple plaques on the wall. To be honest, um, we're, we're getting close. I know the gloss up record. It's um, the with you joint. It's gloss up and Skilla baby off her project. Um, forgot the name of the EP, but uh, charges to my brain. But uh, yeah, that's starting to pick up as well. Well, it's starting to pick up now. So it's just only a matter of time. Like we could, we also could just get one with Glorilla, and it's, it's the next one to go. So we don't know. Uh, uh, like literally, it only takes one, and after that, one it just starts rolling. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I know when 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 that day comes, you get that nice RIAA certification coming to your house that one day. You get that nice bronze, silver, gold, platinum, whatever it may be. I know that'll mean that'll mean the world to you. Like. Your, your, like your hard work is, you know, starting to pay off. You know, you see it now, but you know, it's like now you got mm -hmm. something to hold and hold on to that. So, is there an ultimate goal for all of this? Like, do you do you plan on being somewhere like real, real big, like BET Awards big, even, or you know, you just comfortable with what you got going on here, just under the scenes, and you just do your own thing, um, beats off, and the world knows. You I know. Work. Right now, I've been working with this artist Bree. She has a project dropping. Um, I wrote, co-wrote a song and produced a couple of songs on her project. Um, trying to think. I know we probably got, like me and my team probably got like 15, 16 songs with Big Walk Dog. Um, right now it's just working, enjoying the journey, to be honest. Because I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the work process. Like just, just falling in love with the work process. Everything else is going to just go. Um, fall in place well yeah that's the that's the that's the best part of it you know i remember i did an interview not too long ago about a year ago that the person told me like you can get lost in your journey sometimes you gotta make sure you don't get lost in it because when you get lost mm -hmm. and not enjoy yourself anymore and that's the that's the biggest thing so you know but you know everything sounds sounds great you know i, I wish you the best of luck i hope that you continue to advance in your profession you've been doing it for a while. Um, I forgot to say earlier, um, I normally explain how I know my guests. I've known this guy since I was like 12 years old, pretty much for the most part. So it's probably even younger to be honest. Probably, but I don't, I don't, I can't put it, I can't put it that far back. I feel like I met you and your brother in high school, at like middle school, high school. I feel like it was that around that time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, you know, it's good to see that. It's good to interview one person from my hometown. I've collected a couple of these now, so it's good to see, you know, a lot of my peers that I've grown up with are doing their own thing, making a way for themselves, living a productive and fruitful life. And it's good to see that all of us are doing something that is worth. But um, that's pretty much all I got, man. You got anything else you want to add on before we hop off here? Um, mate, guys, just do what you love. To be honest. Um, I understand that you know it might not be the thing that makes all the money in the world, but if you're doing something that you love, it's 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 not work. I mean, it's it's mostly fun most of the time. I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't agree with that statement. It kind of pains me sometimes when I hear people say, "I want to get into a profession for the money." And it's like, bro, you're not gonna last because you're gonna start learning about it. And you're gonna, hate it. Mm -hmm. you're, gonna you're gonna burn out. So yeah, definitely do what you love. Do the things that you think are nice, no matter what the money brings. Because if you're good enough at it, the money will come regardless mm -hmm. of how how it shakes out. But otherwise than that, guys, that's all we got for today. Uh, this is episode 35. Tune in for our next special um, that is still pending at the moment. But otherwise than that, I'd like to thank AJ for coming on. And, you know, see, check out his music, check out his work, and see y'all soon. Mm -hmm.